Ahoy! Well, I'm not really Dave Jones, but who says I can't have a little mailbag segment? Um, this is something I posted about on the EEV blog forum. It is a item with some historical significance. Sorry, I filmed from my phone here, but as you can see, it's got an interesting logo there. The Office of Civil Defense, CDV 771, something Eon Detection Kit. Well, this has some old uh, Geiger counters from the uh, 1960s in it that are not functioning, but it might be something interesting to look at. Actually, what happened is I was looking for some of these on eBay, and I actually th I thought about getting one of the um, survey meters, which is the ones that don't really do anything unless you have, you know, a, an extremely dangerous amount of radiation nearby. They're for test, you know, checking out the area after, you know, a major nuclear event. So, those, I was going to get one of those and build a little circuit with a uh, Darlington transistor and make a little ion chamber. Um, if you're interested in how that works, uh, just look on YouTube. Uh, the user's channel is BioNerd. 23 I believe and uh, look up uh, Darlington um, radiation detector or I think she put it under the title cheap radiation detection so anyway I was gonna get something on eBay and I f just was doing some googling and I found a posting on a Geiger counter site of a guy that had several items that he was giving away for free and I emailed him and he said well sorry I've already given them away and, I, and he said, the ones I have don't work. And I said, oh, well, it didn't really matter. I was going to go build a circuit anyway to um, do, do that So, the, with the Darlington Array. And he's like, well, I can send you some of the non-working ones for the price of shipping. And I said, well, cool. So not only did he send me some Geiger counters here, he actually sent me a kit or par parts from a kit to actually rebuild one of them. So I might actually get these working. So I have peeked inside, but I haven't pulled everything out yet. But... Anyway, open it up. Inside, it gave me about 10 pages, including schematic and everything, on these uh, Geiger counters. So I'm going to take that out, and I'll try to take it out. And here is a little bag with parts in it. And I'll pour these out so you can see them here. It appears to be a bunch of parts rebuild this. Look, it's got some wires, it's got some transistors, um, oh, Rubicon, nice. Some diodes, PVC tubing, oh, flexible heat shrink tubing, cool. These are gaskets for the meters. He said these do not have meters installed in them because those have been used. So I'm going to pull these out. The, my phone will focus. Let's take a look and see what we have here. Anyway, these are vintage items from the 60s, basically. These were built in from 1959 to 1965 during, you know, a time when everybody was significantly more concerned about nuclear stuff happening with the Cuban Missile Crisis. But anyway, I was trying to shake out the uh, trying to shake out the packing peanuts here, and this. I mean, he really sent me some neat stuff here. Look at we've got. A dial, sorry, I'm moving some things around here. So we have a dial, and I think he said this dial works, and it's got counts per minute and millirankins per hour. And the item itself is a CDV 700. A Victorine Model 6B from the Victorine Instrument Company. And it's got a knob for off times 100, times 10, and times 1. And it's got a, a headphone output here, which is a connector that you don't really see much anymore. And it's got the cable cut off, probably because the cable is bit. I used to have a unit uh, that was a lot like this a long time ago. And I think it got lost or thrown out over the years because I never was never able to get it to work. So if we look inside, it's 
got a nice schematic and some really neat um, vintage circuitry. Those are the calibration adjustments. It's a transformer. And let's see what else there. Mm, don't know what that black thing is. Maybe it's a rectifier, but the circuit looks very simple. As you can see, there's a resistor. And supposedly, let me set this down here. Supposedly, this thing here that looks like a light bulb, I was told, is a selenium rectifier. And you may know from uh, the EEV blog videos, he got a selenium rectifier a long time, um, a few months back, and it was a plate style. So part of the instructions that this guy gave me on how to fix this was that uh, selenium rectifier will be replaced. And so we see we've got the, um, it's the cable there. And actually, this circuit here looks a lot simpler than the one that I used to have. And this takes two or four uh, D batteries, and he said that uh, there's a modification that I think he gave me that information too to make this run on three volts that makes it more reliable. So I may take this apart a little bit more in the future, but I have a second one in here as well. And I think it's exactly the same. Yeah, it's the same model 6B, and it's got a serial number. Uh, so, look on the side here and see what uh, stampings we have here. 71, 77, and 82. So these are in use for a while. Now, the Office of Civil Defense was a government agency, I guess, run by the um, Department of Defense, which is, later became FEMA, and it was for people to monitor the, um, you know, to be prepared in case of a nuclear emergency, you know, the Cuban Missile Crisis and stuff was going on. There was, they were training people, civilians to do this type of work. So, and this also, operational check source, that has a small chip of uh, depleted uranium in it. So both of these have it. As you can see on the side, he did, he covered up all the stuff in here, probably because he didn't want the uh, U.S. mail to kind of freak out when they see the word radiation on a box. But I do think the box is neat because this is the original box, and it's very sturdy, very hard. So I might try to take these labels off, steam them off, just for the neat box. So this is the second unit. Let's see what else we got. Oh, something's heavy at the bottom here. What is that? Oh! Dang, he sent me a new probe. These look like brand new probes. Or not probes or whatever, yeah, whatever you call it. So these work, you have a Geiger tube that goes inside, and that's a shield that rotates out. And when you put that shield up, it blocks the uh, beta emissions, and so there's only, so that only gamma rays can get through. So if you're checking a gamma source, you close that. But he, I didn't realize he sent me these two. And there's something else in here too. Let me go down in here. Ooh, he also sent me a Geiger tube. Let's see if we can zoom in on that a little. Yeah. Okay, well my phone doesn't work nearly as well as a video camera. But I'll read it off to you since you can't see it. 6993 slash 1146246. It says Lionel on it. And in the end, it says Caution. Oh, wait, no, it says Anton Electric. So, let's see if there's anything else in here. Oh, something else that's kind of heavy. Oh, that's his. No, oh, he sent me two. I think he sent me two dials. Wow. That's really cool. So, I have one tube, one Geiger tube, two probe ends, two dials, two units in a rebuild kit, and these instructions are actually on here, which I'm going to pour these into the box here so I don't lose the parts. These instructions are actually written by the guy. It's got his name at the top, and it says 2010, and he provides information on how to put a light on there to indicate 
when uh, LED whenever there's a count of a you know radioactive you know particle or whatever you call a stray uh, time lost for words a uh, stray proton or par particle hits the thing so photographs of the board oh here's a good that's what the board looks like then with everything removed so you've got he says replace old part remove the resistor I guess that's for the converting it to run on three volts replace old part and then it says two new something there so yeah, inside here we got two tr two maybe three transistors what does this one say this one here I'm not gonna hold it up you can't read it but it says CT2N5232 a and there appears to be two of those we have here again you, you won't be able to read it so I'll just read it off to you uh, MPSA 56044 we have two Rubicon 85C rated uh, 470 microfarad 16 volts oh that that focused well the rubber gaskets uh, two diodes which he may have told me in the email what they were Let's see what it's I'm gonna read it off here uh, two six zero or G wait GP two six GP two six zero so let's look at the next page so this is a the three volt modification circuit with the um, LEDs installed so it looks like he took the official scan and then he drew little things onto it and here is three volt modification without LEDs installed so for the price of just shipping this guy sent me two Geiger counters with apparently operational check source I, there's, yeah it does feel like there's definitely something in there there's a little bump on it and he told me even the exact type of paint to buy at uh, the hardware store that will match this color because they have apparently they have that exact paint color that's commonly available so we got two of those so these units themselves they sell for about hundred and fifty dollars or so each so, so anyway, this one says 1971 1977 1982 so these were in use in this box here 71, 78, 81, 87, and 1990. So this thing is in use for quite a while. I don't think that there's, I don't know if there's a way to even tell the age on the boards inside here. I mean, it does have a serial number. So that may be useful somehow. But I did, like I said earlier, I did have two Geiger counters that are very similar to this uh, that my dad got for me when I was younger. He worked at a place that did oil and gas drill logging and they were Victorine units. One was gray and one was blue and it had it had the similar knob but it also had a battery check and also had a screw terminal here that said cal so I guess calibration and instead of just a just a you know wire like that it had a wire coming at a, uh, a B and C jack and then the, the, uh, the probes were rounded on the end like a spherical type tip and they were a little longer this and you could the shield actually you could slide out on it I'm not sure if that's the way it was supposed to work and then it had a BNC on the end there so this is just something really cool and I hope I can I hope I can get one of these working because I've got some neat ideas there um, to try I don't really have anything radioactive to play with other than those check sources I've got a uh, smoke detector in my apartment which I'm probably not going to try to take apart but I think the americium inside is not a beta emitter so this thing is not going to pick it up this this thing will, will only pick up beta and gamma it won't pick up alpha particles so I might modify one to pick up alpha using the little Darlington array thing that I had before so anyway this is really cool 
hopefully you guys, uh, I'm mainly posting this for the members of the EEV blog forum, but uh, I thought other people on my channel might find it interesting as well. So, anyway, um, hope you liked it. Thanks.